the recording started yes good morning good morning Arne. all right so uh, let's pray together i uh, would like to request someone uh crazy are you able to pray today are you comfortable to pray Okay, uh, all right, then maybe Christopher, Christopher, uh, would you please be able to pray? Okay, uh, I think I'll just leave it open. Anyone who is comfortable and ready, yeah, please. Go ahead and pray. Uh, can I pray? Ah, yes, yes, Abhishek, please. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before your, holy, uh, your throne of grace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for you give us new blessing and grace each morning. And your mercies are new every morning, Lord. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn in this class, Lord. So I pray, Father, bless Pastor, with your spirit of revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and remove every form of distraction from this class so that we can uh, go learn smoothly without any kind of distraction. And bless each one of the students with understanding heart and a listening ear that whatever we learn in this class, it goes into deep in our spirit, Lord. So thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, thank you, Abhishek. Um, we will uh, get to our content here. So, so far we were uh, talking about partnership in the body of Christ, partnership in the kingdom of God and how partnership is uh, something that we must um, uh, try to establish. We must prepare our minds for it. And that will come only when we are kingdom minded. You know, we um, we talked about how putting others before ourselves is very very essential when we are talking about kingdom building uh, to have a mindset where we are more concerned about advancing the kingdom rather than our own personal agenda or our own personal ministry. So uh, that is the kingdom mindset, and uh, we must learn to connect and work with each other. Try to understand that God has gifted us in uh, uh, different ways and that together we are able to achieve more together uh, we are able to complement one another and uh, uh, you know it's it's more fruitful um, uh, the work that we are able to do for the kingdom of god so these are all things that we saw and we talked about uh, you know certain attitudes that we must maintain where we mustn't judge um, you know others uh, 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 without any basis or so we must not look down on others and their ministries uh, we must have a cooperative mindset towards others so all of those things we've seen and uh, we were touching upon the benefits or the value of partnership so we said that uh, when we have partnership it builds unity so unless we come together now where is the question of of uh, um, developing that that uh, a brotherly love for one another because we are not at all in contact but when we come in contact maybe through partnership you know it it could have to do with uh, something that we are working towards uh, it could have to do with praying for the city so we are partnering for something and that partnership uh, actually results in the unity among uh, the people of god so it's an opportunity basically for unity so uh, we must encourage partnerships you know, across the churches, across various ministries. And we talked about, you know, what could be some of the uh, hindrances to partnership. Again, it, it has to do with attitude. When we have an attitude um, where we don't want to accommodate others, then we end up, um, you know, doing our own thing. And we are not so concerned about the kingdom, what benefits the kingdom at large. So, these are all things that we have looked at. Um, so as we consider, uh, you know, partnership, um, 
are there any uh, i think we were discussing about uh, you know whether we we have uh, come across partnerships that are valuable for the kingdom of god anything that you know you have uh, witnessed um, in your in your uh, journey you know, as as a as a as a person in your city or your region any partnerships that you've come across and i think there were a few examples uh, that you know we we discussed so uh, maybe we'll take a little bit of time to discuss these things about partnerships and then we will go to the next subject here so if you have witnessed any effective partnerships among um, uh, uh, different ministries you could uh, just share that so uh, right after this class you know i was thinking i was thinking um, about the current partnerships that that i see so uh, i just came across a recently um, uh, you know i i i watched some uh, worship productions um, and they've been an incredible blessing Okay, the the songs and the uh, the uh, just the way uh, it's been produced, and uh, while I was just looking up and trying to understand how they've they've made these worship productions, um, I realized that it's not one ministry, but there are several ministries, and uh, even the songs that have been written. It was interesting to know that uh, you know they have this whole songwriting workshop where. Uh, uh one of the things that is emphasized is um a kingdom heart so people come together uh, they seek god together and then you know they have these sessions where they um they they write uh, what god's spirit is laying on their hearts so people write up songs and apparently once the songs are written um another team let's say team a has written the songs uh, apparently team b is the one that that gives music to the lyrics which were written by another group so once that is done you know, they select um, i mean uh, it totally depends if if uh, somebody from these two teams is fitting to sing the songs and they sing it otherwise someone completely different sings the song and you know they kind of uh, i was really blessed to hear that this is the process that they follow Uh, because they they want to develop that attitude among the songwriters and the worship leaders where they what they're saying is um god is important our worship to god is important it's not like it's not that hey this is my song you don't sing it i will sing it better you know that attitude and that mindset they wanted to break among the uh, the ones engaged in worship so uh it's really beautiful you know they uh, they've given the names of those who have written a particular song and somebody else sang it uh, and you know it's it's just so beautiful it's come out really wonderful it's a blessing and uh, the entire attitude of of that particular production which i saw uh, it, it wasn't like a performance but they were not trying to show off um uh, their skills or their talents it was just pure worship they were focusing on worship they were focusing on uh you know lifting up praises to god and seeing the power of god manifested so i was so encouraged this was uh, like an indian production but then i did come across some of the uh, uh productions abroad as well i'm not you know i generally try not to say names of ministries or people because uh i i, I don't know i mean i i feel like i don't know how it will be taken so that's the reason i'm not mentioning any names but there are collaborations out there and i'm sure um you are witness to that as well and it's an incredible blessing you know people coming together and partnering it's it's to say that okay i have this and i am bringing that on the table whatever you have you know you bring it on the table let's see what we can all do together for god's kingdom so partnership is a blessing and it also as a, as we discussed it builds that heart of unity where we understand that we need each other you know we have to help each other and we saw psalm 133 that says that wherever there is unity god commands a blessing on that place so some of the uh, recent uh, partnerships that i have seen and uh, i'm really impressed by you know i just wanted to share with us and uh, anything that you have come across that has blessed you which is a good example uh, for you i uh, could please share and i think it will help all of us <clears throat> uh, pastor 
Yes, yes, please. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so um, I I'll just use uh, an example over here in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Samaritan Post. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess it's worldwide, yeah. So mm. they kind of do, what they do is a uh, Operation Christmas Box towards Christmas. And they partner with a number of churches here in Canada. And um, when I was in Edmonton, I remember that we always used to um, take a lot of, um, uh, we, we got boxes and then we'll engage the whole church. The young adults will actually take that initiative to lead the church in donating, giving money or, you know, um, giving gifts and putting them in the box and then we sh we get we send them off to the depot where they will take it over to ship all across the world to uh, alongside with other churches so for me i'm just uh when i came in contact with that that was back in 2016 that was um, um that was really a great partnership i i, I felt was something that i think every church you know shouldn't even be cajoled to be part of in natural and sorry 2013 rather 2013 this is when i knew about it it was later on i started doing it 2016 in another church so yeah uh, and i see that kind of partnership as a way of engaging the church in being part of a worldwide evangelism you know because those gifts were basically used to get into countries whereby young boys and young girls have never heard the gospel and so it just shows that unknowingly you have actually contributed to the salvation of someone's soul you know so those kind of partnerships really that um, something like that uh, I, I was blessed and happy to be part of yeah yes thank you thank you say yeah that's that's wonderful um and we yeah and we do know that uh, thank you samaritans first is doing an excellent work uh, in across uh, different countries so that's a good example <coughs> sorry everyone so uh, uh, anyone you know you, would you like to add to that any examples that you are aware of and you think that uh, that's a blessing and that's um, you know showing us what kingdom mindset is what partnership uh, in the kingdom of God is. Is it that we don't have uh, uh, partnerships or is it that, you know, we're not aware of partnerships around us? Uh, can I speak further? Yes, yes, please, Nangi. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of uh, a recent part partnership that we have, have, have encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, our local church is up, sorry, our local church uh, partnered another church in, in, in Devon and last week I went there for, for a conference and end of November I will go there again for a week so that I, they can, I can learn what they're doing, what you're not doing well so that I can bring back the knowledge to, to our local church. Thank you. Pastor. Yep, that's great. That's great, Mandy. So thank you. Um, we saw an example where there is social action um, through partnership. And what Mandy is saying is it's more like a spiritual equipping, spiritual enriching through partnership. Yes, even that is something that we can um, collaborate for, some spiritual enrichment and equipping. So good. Thank you, Mandy. That's a good example as well. So maybe one more example. Uh, and then we can move forward. So anyone, if you have witnessed positive collaboration, partnership. Uh, Pastor, I can just add, add another one. Um, yes, please. One familiar to us is the Christ for All Nation. 
So the the main base of operation is in African countries. Um, when Renan Bonke was alive, he instituted that, and then he went from the west to the north to the south, um, east of West Africa, evangelizing. And one thing he usually did was that he partnered with all the churches within that locality, locality and then every um, person who makes a decision to follow Jesus Christ, they always got their address and then redirected them, you know, to those churches to go be part of. And also they would turn over the names of those who they have made the decision to receive Jesus Christ, you know, to follow up after them so we this partnership is something that they they can they've always been doing they don't just come evangelize but they partner with all churches around that locality or that state you know so that at the end of the day the believers um, the, the newborn um believers could now be part of a family so that's another partnership that um that inspires and uh yeah that mm -hmm. learn from yeah yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Say. Uh, isn't this uh, what uh, Reina Bonke uh, is a part of? Uh, Christ yes, for All yes. Nations. Christ yeah, for All Nations, okay. yeah. That's, yes, okay. Reina Bonke, yeah. Which Bonke, is now yeah. Michael, Michael, I can't remember the person who is now um, the overseer of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Reina Bonke has passed on now, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, uh, Say. I, I think we have, uh, I have attended one of those. Uh, crusades here. They had uh, it sometime in India as well, but I don't. I don't think it it picked up the way it uh, picked up across the African continent. But they had a couple of crusades and uh, the same model. They tried partnering with churches, um, people who responded to the salvation call. Their contact details were collected and they were sent to all the local churches so that after the crusade is done, the churches can do the follow up. So. It was a massive, massive program. And yeah, that also is a, a picture of collaboration. And uh, yeah, I think I do remember that they had a, like a pre-crusade prayer uh, where uh, this was started, of, if I'm correct, maybe a month prior or two months prior. And they called for the churches to come together to pray for the crusade. Um, so that was also interesting because you had people from uh, different churches, but all interceding for the salvation of the city uh, over a over a month. So yeah, uh, that's nice. Uh, people come together beyond my church, my denomination, my ministry, and uh, work together. So uh, you know, thank God for uh, some of these. Uh, partnerships that we have seen and uh, uh, it's good like even as we go forward in the in the work that God has called us to do uh, as kingdom kingdom um, uh, people we must be for uh, these healthy partnerships to build God's kingdom okay so uh, I think that kind of throws more light on this concept of partnership uh, what we'll do is we can move on to the next section here. This is about the citywide church. Citywide church establishing God's kingdom. Now, we are aware that God has called us to um, establish his kingdom in all walks of life. This is not restricted to the kingdom of God coming only upon our lives. So that means, you know, the rule and reign of God everything that exists in heaven, which is uh, God's dominion without any interference, God's peace, you know, God's presence, the righteousness, uh, uh, you know, that, that uh, people live in uh, up in heaven, the joy, the hope, um, the state of uh, not being sick, you know, all of this, whatever is the status of heaven, what we're saying is let that come to earth. So thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, this must extend to our families, to our church communities and beyond our church communities because there is no restriction on the extent that God has uh, given us. So 
we can also pray and ask God for the kingdom of God to come upon our city. So when we are looking at our city, you know, a couple of things um, that concern us. One is you know, the salvation, people's salvation, people are not saved. Uh, the other thing is the, the conditions that exist. We could look at some of the wrong things that are happening in our city. Uh, it could be corruption, it could be crimes, it could be uh, you know different things that are actually destructive to the progress of the city. All of this concer concerns us. And as the body of Christ, when we're talking about the kingdom of God coming upon the city, what we really are looking for is, yes, a spiritual transformation, uh, which, of course, is the precursor to any other form of transformation that we, we want for our city. But together with the spiritual transformation, we want to see God move uh, on the social issues. We want you know, God to touch every aspect of city life. So that is, is what we are aiming for. And God has called us, uh, as we have seen you know, when we studied about praying for the city. We said that God calls us to bless the city where we uh, are positioned. Jeremiah 29 and 7, we saw how God has a heart for the city. So God sent people in the past to prophesy over cities, to uh, preach to cities. Jonah is a wonderful example. God had a particular city in mind. It's not that God aimlessly told him, yeah, you go anywhere and you, you minister to anyone. But God wanted him to go to um, Nineveh. Because he had a heart for the people in Nineveh. He wanted them to repent and he wanted the kingdom of God to come there. So as God's people, you know, we must have a vision for the city. Because God has a vision for the city. God is displeased by the sin in the city. If you recall Sodom and Gomorrah, that sin came before God. And God had to take a call. He had to um, move uh, based on his nature because his nature is love, yes, but he's also a just God. So you know, he had to take a call on uh, bringing destruction upon the city. So all of these things we are aware of. And who is the representative of God in a given city? It's you and I. It's every believer. It is the, uh, the uh, local churches. It is the body of Christ. It is the family of God. So we are the representatives. And through us, God wants to see his kingdom come, not just you know, individually in our own uh, lives, in our own small little circles, but this has to impact the city and thereby the region, thereby the nation and then beyond. So that is God's heart for us. And we see that in every city, you know, God has um, believers, he has uh, ministers, he has uh, pastors and leaders uh, position. Now, all of us together, you know, we are the people who need to have a vision for God's kingdom in a city. So for this to happen, for this to happen, can just one believer pray and can the change come? Yes, why not? We see that in scripture. God is looking for one man to stand in the gap. And as we pursue the presence of God, even one person, initiated by one person, things can change in a city. However, now if we are looking at a large impact and a sustained impact over a city, it is going to take a citywide um, engagement. It's going to take a citywide spiritual battle, so to speak. And for that, the citywide church needs to come together. Come together uh, primarily. You know, whenever we say come together, it yes, physically, that is helpful. But uh, the hearts of the people united together to make a difference for the city. You know, that, that is what is essential. Otherwise, we can have the surface level gatherings and uh, you know we can just do uh, the, the whole partnership um, you know partnership is good so we get together we meet one another we greet one another but beyond that you know at the depths of it do we have do we really have a heart all of us do we really have a heart 
for the city are we um, really putting the city ahead are we really uh, trusting god for the kingdom of god to come upon the city you know that is the core issue here even beyond just coming together physically so to have that sincere heart for the city is what is required so uh, for a city wide transformation we need the body of christ to come together the body of christ in a city will involve many congregations so just one local body you know cannot do this we need uh, many congregations to come together and we know that jesus prayed for this isn't it so john 17 was 21 where you know jesus prayed for the believers to come he said that they all may be one as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me so it is a witness for the world when the body of christ has unity the flip side if you are all fighting with one another and the body of christ in a city is disintegrated so that does not bear witness to the name of jesus so uh, for us to impact the city it's going to take the unity of the city wide church or all the uh, congregations which are part of that city and uh, that's how we will be able to make an impression now uh, we do understand you know, as we've already been talking about this in in the partnership uh, um discussion that every local church is different you know uh, what they they believe uh what their um, uh, formats are like their expression of worship their style of worship so all of these things can be different but when at the core of it we all worship the lord jesus as our savior and those main um uh main beliefs about salvation you know and the and the uh, trinity and the deity of christ so these things are sorted as long as these things the the very very foundations of the christian faith are clear you know we we can still um uh, serve together we can still you know uh, walk together and uh, we will not be as we said earlier we will not be majoring on the minus there are some of those other matters if you bring those matters up yeah definitely there will be quarrels and arguments but uh, we we all kind of um uh, agree that okay we will not bring those matters uh, uh, in in you know we won't bring those matters that cause division but we will hold on to uh, the core beliefs and we will just respect one another for who we are we will maintain uh, that love and you know that support uh, for for one another because this is about the kingdom and this is about impacting the city and about city transformation so a city wide a church right can come together uh, in this manner a city wide church can be uh, an extended community of believers and when we do this you know, we um, uh, know how to work together you know we really sincerely love one another we are demonstrating that that love of christ and and uh, we become the witness for christ in any given city uh, and the world may believe jesus said and it's a great way of impacting the world for the gospel so that unity is required now unity is one thing the second thing is um engaging the city so as the body of believers come together there are many things that we can partner towards uh, we can partner towards spiritual goals as we've already seen we can partner towards social goals or you know there can also be uh, there are uh, today there are some of these ministries that are more focused on marketplace marketplace uh, bringing the who's who in uh, business or some other field and uh, uh, through them making an impact uh, and and um, establishing the principles of of the um, word of god for the workplace you know 
it can be in the marketplace it can be in any arena you know, just talk about it and uh, it, it's possible to make an impact as long as the body of christ comes together and they understand that hey we have a common vision for the city here we have a common vision uh, for the gospel in the city here and we are going to make an impact for the kingdom of god you know, we are uh, able to work together from there so uh, when we talk about partnership for city transformation there are some common foundations uh, that you know we we all have uh, we must recognize that we are at the end of the day one body we've talked about it when we said that we are the body of christ we are all members individually but there is only one body we are part of that one body so uh, we need to maintain that uh, we must also recognize that what brings us together is our submission to the lordship of jesus christ okay so that is what is keeping us together we are all part of the kingdom we are born again second thing is we are all uh, submitted to god we are following his will and that's why we are working together and the third thing of course is the attitude with which we relate so we uh, choose to love one another respect support and partner you know as required uh, for the kingdom of god and when um, uh, people of god relate in this way um, we can make a big difference in the city okay so since we're talking about partnership and uh, collaboration and coming together uh, it is always good if the leaders set the example so how can we how can we cause this unity to come about in the city no it's a good thing for this to begin with the leaders so uh, some sort of a fellowship of the christian leaders in a city no we can encourage that if the christian leaders are able to come together uh, they are able to uh, fellowship with one another so that that will create that bond okay uh, and from there they will be able to uh, encourage their congregations to also um, have that brotherly love for one another so a good place to start is with the leadership so we can invite um, a senior pastors we can invite uh, associate pastors we can invite you know the pastoral team of uh, um, congregations and because uh, the work of god in a city is not just done by the churches but there are what we also call as para church organizations uh, there are organizations um, uh, that may only involve in social action so you know we could we could say ngos based on christian principles and values so leaders of all of these uh, organizations we might have uh, some uh, leaders in the marketplace they may not necessarily have or be running a christian organization but we know that they are making a, a, an incredible impact for the kingdom of god so they are also uh, christian leaders who who can be invited so all of these people can be invited to come and spend time with one another now how does this help you know whenever we we do something like this um you know people end up spending time with each other and uh, uh, in a in a city you know if we we all understand how busy uh, uh, things can get like even um, just regular life can be so busy that we don't spend time with you know people we know and uh, people we care about but to host meetings that will bring all these christian leaders together um you know that will become a platform or an opportunity for these leaders to actually spend some quality time with one another and whenever you know people are able to spend uh, quality time with one another what happens relationships form uh, there is uh, you know some bonding that takes place uh, uh, some understanding that comes Okay, uh, between the leaders, and we are able to think think together. We are able to uh, have a vision for the city to get there. And we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk about you know how to do it, how to do this in a given city. So the goal, uh, as we've understood now, is to form relationships. Now, uh, I I think uh, each one of us will uh, agree if I say that 
it's so easy when leaders come together for everyone to come uh, only with a concern about their ministry okay it happens it happens because uh, when leaders come together it's possible that they want to talk about what god's doing in their ministry and also want to promote their ministry because hey this is a super platform where other leaders are there so i can just promote my uh, new app or my new uh, production or my new sermon series or my new something you know conference it can become about the ministry but we have to intentionally uh, 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 look for opportunities or create opportunities where it is more about the lives of these leaders connecting okay uh, and that will be a wonderful place to start some uh, or rather uh, not start but uh, nurture facilitate genuine brotherly relationships between christian leaders okay so one example that uh, we have here actually this is something that apc has tried and uh, we still have it it's been going on for several years uh, in bangalore city right now uh, this is a round table conference uh, uh, sorry a round table discussion model that we have so what what happens is we have uh, uh, like the pastors uh, from across the city they are invited for breakfast okay and generally it takes place on the first wednesday of the of the month uh, we meet quite early we meet quite early so the first one hour uh, all the pastors leaders you know we spend time worshiping god we spend time also interceding for uh, some of the key points key things that are going on in the city i remember once it was time for our elections so we uh, just focused on that you know we prayed over our city we prayed over our nation and it was a really powerful time because you had you know uh, the uh, senior pastors of some churches and you had all these leaders everyone coming together so uh, it was a time in prayer followed by uh, there's always you know a, a, a breakfast time so the breakfast time we get to meet one another we kind of you know able to ask them okay how are you doing how is your family uh, so it's it's more of that personal kind of a talk where we uh, we believe that it really helps to build that genuine relationship you know it's not all business but spending time with one another just over a meal and uh, uh, getting to know the person for who they are you know uh, it, it kind of facilitates that and followed by that you know, there is a time for a round table discussion so in the round table discussion what happens is uh, every month there is a certain issue that we take up okay uh, that could be about um, uh, i remember once we did the book of timothy so paul's instructions to timothy about um, being a certain kind of a pastor and leading the church in a certain way so uh, portions from that uh, it 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 was looked at for a couple of weeks so um, somebody will lead and uh, you know they will uh, pose questions to everyone who's attending and the leaders kind of sit in uh, uh, in circles uh, with other leaders so small groups maybe about i don't know five people five it depends it depends on the number of people attending the uh, the breakfast meeting on that day so a small group gets together and we basically brainstorm we talk to each other and uh, the good thing is people are from all kinds of denominations okay uh, but that doesn't matter because we are looking at scripture and then we are discussing okay oh yeah okay paul said this so what does it mean how are you applying it in your church Uh, and sometimes you know there is there is a um, question posed about okay city wide evangelism how are we going to do about it what some of the uh, some of the latest uh, methods which are being used maybe we have somebody who comes in for that that breakfast meeting who shares for 30 minutes about some of the new methods in christian ministry and after that we have this round table discussion on evangelism in the city so we've had you know uh, presentations as well we've had presentation on marriage and uh, uh, how uh, even christian leaders uh, uh, must 
really think about this and um, take care of their marriage, family. There was one presentation I remember about media, media and ministry. So we had some people who are engaged in media who came and gave their ideas to to kind of, uh, you know, help uh, help uh, the, the ministries do better. And from there came some discussions about, hey, I want to do this. Okay, I will help you. I have, you know, certain resources that I can send you. So this is more about a brotherly kind of a partnership more than um, you know just uh, us talking about our ministries and promoting our ministries. So what's really happening? You know, relationships are being built over a period of time. Okay, relationships are being built over a period of time. And I remember recently when COVID happened, we had one of our pastors' meetings, and that. Well, there was a uh, there was a discussion. These pastors who attend the meeting, uh, you know, they were invited for a discussion uh, about COVID and what we can do about COVID. And uh, as many of you all know, the COVID relief project was initiated from one of those discussions where we met with the citywide, uh, you know, pastors team. So uh, this is a um, an example, you know, which we want to present uh, where over the years. You know, building those genuine relationships, okay, that has helped. And uh, uh, there is value in that. You know, instead of doing, it's possible to just do something more like a conference style where people come in, uh, they just uh, spend a lot of time you know, listening to, to um, a sermon. And then there's very little time to get to know one another or to talk about the issues of or challenges that the leaders are actually going through, right? Maybe something to do with integrity, something to do with finances, something to do with uh, not being very well equipped, uh, you know, um, uh, with technology in their in their ministry. But when we bring up those relevant questions and also provide a good environment for fellowship, a safe environment where pastors and leaders can ask questions, right? And when relationships are built there is a better chance for accountability, right? Uh, if something goes wrong in someone's ministry, as a brother, or I can, or, or, you know, a sister, I can always ask uh, a pastor that I know. I can just call and say, hey, I heard this, you know, what's happening? Because we have that relationship now. Um, so uh, it's helpful for that unity to come um, among pastors first. And, uh, you know, we basic, the point is to nurture relationships, but to nurture those genuine, uh, you know, relationships where we have uh, mutual respect and brotherly love for one another. It's all not ministry oriented. That will be a great blessing for the citywide church. Okay, So we can begin with leadership. We can begin with leadership and bring that unity among the leadership. Okay, moving on. Um, partnerships. Okay, partnerships uh, uh, for city transformation. Now, this is more ministry oriented. What are the things that we can do? What are the things that we can uh, um, make happen in the city? First is relationships. The second thing here is a partnership uh, for impact and in partnership, you know, what we're talking about is we're talking about collaborating with one another, cooperating with one another, okay, and uh, picking up matters. These can be spiritual matters, uh, social matters, business related, you know, whatever else we think is important, and we can uh, work along those lines. Now, again, when it comes to uh, partnership, it would be nice if we can have um, something that is long term, something that is uh, focused on really seeing a transformation, okay, in that whatever area we pick. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, we, we are talking about uh, suicides, okay, suicides among teenagers. It'll be great if a ministry which is called for that. Uh, and let's say a church which is interested in that, so they collaborate. They collaborate uh, not just for the sake of, you know, we are promoting an event. And once the event is done, it's over. 
you know, or just have a gathering. Once the gathering is done, it's over. Not in that sense, but it would be nice. Uh, we do understand that for lack of resources, some uh, projects can only be for a while. Uh, only a couple of things can be done through that project and it's closed. That's okay. But for the long term, making a real impact, you know, making a real change in the lives of the people, maybe having a, uh, um, a partnership over an extended period of time, right, across ministries, across churches, that would be, that would be wonderful, you know, if, if that can happen. Um, so once the leaders have a kingdom mindset, once the leaders uh, understand the value of partnering together, you know, uh, they, they can begin to encourage, they can begin to encourage such collaborations which will make a long-term impact in the city. Uh, they could probably, the leaders could probably look at some of the initiatives that are already in place and, uh, you know, give it more trust in, in any which way. Or uh, they might think that, okay, you know, there is a new area which is uh, a problem in the city. Now, how can we start something fresh to address this matter in the city? And maybe a, a new initiative uh, is put in place and that is uh, steered forward. So uh, what we'll do is I think we'll just go ahead and take a break uh, and then we'll come back and uh, discuss about partnership for city transformation. Uh, but at this point, any, any thoughts, any uh, comments you want to add? Okay, so about the um, round table discussions, uh, for a couple of years, uh, we had our Bible college students joining us in the monthly pa pastors meetings. Uh, and, you know, it, it was a good uh, time for them as well. They saw how pastors and leaders of the city get together, how they pray together, how you know, they discuss uh, matters together. So I don't know if any one of you was part of that. Uh, part of that. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. But uh, at, at the moment, because of COVID, we are not. We had a couple of online meetings, but we uh, felt that it was not, uh, you know, as effective as meeting in person. So last few months we've not had it. Uh, but once uh, you know things are better in the city. Hopefully we'll, we will resume it uh, and if at all, you know, any of you are uh, attending the on-campus classes, uh, I'm sure there will be an opportunity for you to, to attend uh, these meetings. Okay, so yeah, just uh, some information there. All right, so uh, let's go for a break class. We will be back at uh, 11 a.m. Okay, and we'll continue where we've stopped. Thank you. <laughs> 